So recently, you may have seen the video, I put together a DIY battery bank in my spare bedroom, and it's kind of large. And recently, I upgraded that battery bank to two 100 amp hour batteries. And because of that, I had this Renergy battery, which is a pretty nice battery, kind of just sitting there doing nothing. So I decided to put together this little battery box right here, which is a lot more appealing than having some big battery bank sitting in your room, right? This is just a toolbox, and I'll go through everything that's how I put this together, but it's basically just a toolbox, and you set it in your room, and nobody would really ever know. Another reason I wanted to put this together is to show the, uh, it's, it's basically the same size, a little bit bigger than one of the power stations, depending on how much, what you put in here and what size of toolbox you use. The benefit of something like this is the fact that when something in this goes bad or breaks down, you can just open this up and replace the different components in here. When something in one of those power stations goes bad, you're either taking it to somebody to repair or you're buying a brand new one and spending all of that money over again. If this inverter goes out, which I don't think it will, uh, that's $100. If this battery goes out, depending on what you bought, that's a couple hundred dollars. These fans, this charge controller, if you want to upgrade this box, you have the option to do all that. So that's why I think one of these it, it'll save you a couple hundred dollars, maybe, depending on what components you use. But the, the bigger issue, I think, with me is being able to replace each individual part if and when it goes bad or if and when I decide, like this one's got a 600-watt inverter, when I decide I want 1,000 watts or 1,500 watts, I have the option to put that in here, although I don't know that 1,500 watts would fit in here. And one more thing I wanted to do with this box is make it water resistant as possible. You can see I didn't put any holes in the top. I do have holes for the fans right here, but eventually I'm gonna put a flap or a cover over this or a tent to deflect the rain. Uh, it's under this lip right here, but I want it to be completely waterproof. This has got a seal on it. This has got the seal around the edge. This I need to silicone. On the back, I did put a couple holes. I'll just throw some silicone on there. And this, I need to probably put a little bit of silicone around these. But other than that, the top, I didn't want to put any holes in. The front, I need to silicone this. And the bottom, I didn't want to put any holes in. So this is, if it is left out in the rain or it starts raining and I have to run over and go get it, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I won't leave it out in the rain, but it is water resistant. So with that, let me go ahead and take this battery out and I will show you the inside and how I put this all together. All right, so inside here, we've got, kind of got a, a good shot of this. You can see that what I started doing, I, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it really is a lot more simple than it looks. And again, this is basically the same exact setup that I have on, the, on my dolly in the bedroom. But I started off with drilling the holes for the two fans here. I wanted to put fans in because if this is closed, I want to be able to have airflow in here. I did some testing and it's with this inverter on for at 400 watts for about a half an hour or so. It only raised about 10 or 20 degrees, but that's still a little bit, you know, I just want to be better safe than sorry type thing. With this lid open, it doesn't get very hot at all. If I'm using 100 watts, it doesn't really change at all. That's why I wanted to put this power switch on right here, and this is just for the fans, but I wanted to put this on so I could turn the fans off and on. They only use five watts a piece, but I'd rather not have to use them if I don't need them. And before I actually installed these, I made this bottom brace for the battery. What I want, I didn't want to put holes in the bottom, so I cut this out to fit in here uh, nice and snug, and the battery could go in here. That way, if I'm going up or down with this, it's not going to, if I'm going side to side, it's not, the battery's not going to move. And then I put this back brace on, and this is, the, the only choice was to actually put holes in the back of this toolbox to get this inverter on, but I figured that was okay, I'd throw some silicone on it. Then I attached the inverter to this board, 
and then also made this plug because while you could open this up and turn on the inverter and plug something in, I wanted to make sure that you could keep this closed and have a plug on the outside here. So I put on this plug right here and what I did is just bought a little extension cord, really short extension cord, chopped that off at the end and then inserted it in the wires, the three wires into this. And for these holes, uh, like this one right here, and then you've got three right here. I used a, a hole saw set that I have, and you just get the right saw, drill that hole, uh, make sure and clean up the edges a little bit, and this slides right in. Uh, these ones as well. This one was a little trickier because it's got to get three, and you've got to line them all up. But once they are lined up, you just throw the screws in, uh, and it's, it's all nice and tight, nice and secure. So once I got the inverter in, I decided I wanted to put some DC ports on the outside right here, like I was just showing you. These DC ports right here, this has got an on-off switch. I'll show you when I plug the battery back in. But the on-off switch, it's got a cigarette lighter port where you can plug. I've got an inverter that is 300 watts instead of 600 watts. I could plug that in here and use less energy. This is only rated to 120 watts, I believe, though, so we can't use that generator at, or that inverter at full power and then it shows you the battery level here which isn't really important but it's also got usb ports which i like so on the outside of this i could put a splitter on here and have two ports uh, i've got the two ports for usbs so this is basically the same thing as a lot of the inverters there's even some of these i could put another one down here that's got the type c or whatever i wanted to do but this has basically got all the stuff that a just one of the, the pre-made power banks would have. And then on this side, like I said, the power didn't matter much because I've got this with this Renergy smart battery. Uh, this has got, this reads straight from the BMS and it tells you exactly uh, how much charge there is. I'll show you here in a second and how many amps you are using. This right here, the next part I did was put this solar option on. I put the charge controller on and I put it up here. This was a little bit tricky, but this actually worked out pretty well. Uh, I got lucky with this because all I did was take out, I used a Dremel and a, a saw to cut this little plastic piece below this out. And then this fit right in there. I put a piece of Velcro on the back here to keep it stuck, but I don't want to rely on that because if this does get hot in here, it's likely that that Velcro fails. So I put a couple zip ties on here that will hold this in place if it does, if that Velcro d does decide that it wants to uh, separate from the plastic or from the back of this. So it's going to stay in place regardless. And then I just tied in the wires to this, you, to this port right here that I use for all of my connections for solar power. Eventually, I'm going to trade these out for Anderson power poles. But right now, this is all of this, the solar options that I have, so I went ahead and went with this one right here. And one thing with this meter I wanted to show you, this meter right here that gives you the battery percentage and amps used, it's got a super long cord because it's meant to be inside of RVs. I've got it tucked down here right now, but it's, it's just super long and it's a big bundle of cord. Uh, it, I didn't want to, I, I could eventually take this end off and reattach one myself. Uh, that's beyond my skill level at this point, but I know it can be done and it's probably fairly easy. But since I had the room in here, I just decided to leave it like it is. And also in the beginning, I, I put all of the connections, there's only four connections, and I put them on top of the battery, which is fine. You can do that, but I wanted to make sure that the, the top of the battery was clean and I could pull it out fairly easily like I just did. So what I did was put these two bus bars in, and what a bus bar is basically is just an extension of your the connections on your battery. So I've got a positive and a minus, and then you just take, you run one of these to the bus bar and it turns into the new terminal. And then with that, I put the negatives from the fans and the negative from these, these three little outlets right here. Uh, and this comes pre-wired, which was pretty nice. And the negatives from the inverter and the negatives from the charge controller all to these rather than the battery. Uh, and there's plenty of room in here to do this. So uh, that worked out pretty well. Let me put this battery back in and I will show you the, uh, the power setup.
All right, so as you can see, the charge controller kicks on. There's no nothing coming to it right now. Uh, this is a 10 amp charge controller. I wanted something pretty small, which means I can't plug it directly into the solar panels I have outside because that runs about 15 amps. It runs over 10 amps. But I've got a smaller solar panel that's only 40 watts, but until I get another 100 watt solar panel, and, and probably two, two would be right around that 10 mark, uh, but that's going to do for now. That's sort of a trickle charger for this. This will be staying in my garage and I'll use it periodically. But this kicks on. You've got, I've got the temperature gauge right in front here, which shows what the temperature is inside this box. So if I do have, say I've got the inverter on and I don't have anything right now to plug into this, but say I've got this inverter on, this temperature reading will tell me exactly what the temperature is inside that box. And if it gets too hot, I'll just kick on the fans, and they are, you can kind of hear it here, they are, uh, you know, uh, not loud, but you, you can definitely hear them. And this amount of volume right here is about what this inverter kicks out as well when it's on. So uh, this is not something that you'd want, you know, in your tent or something like that, but uh, it, it works pretty well. And it, th this, the fans do lower the temperature quite a bit in there. Then, like I said, I've also got this port over here that will tell you the wattage of the battery, which is sort of irrelevant because, like I said, I've got this one right here, which tells you how many amp hours you have left, how many watts it's pulling, and the state of charge of the battery. So this is pretty cool because this is 100% accurate. Some, I mean, you can put a shunt in here if you want, but a lot of the, the battery monitors go off of the voltage of this. Like this is gonna go off the voltage of this battery. It's not super accurate. This one is. So that's basically it for this. I know this is not uh, the wiring in here. I know there are a lot of people that are much better at wiring and organizing this stuff than I am. And maybe I'll do that in the future. But for now, this, this, it works out pretty well. It's easy to take this battery out. Just take this negative stuff behind there and move things out of the way. Fairly easy, everything fits in here. Nothing is going to get caught in the fans or anything like that. Everything's nice and tight. All the wires are labeled black and red. Really simple to set something like this up. It's, it's basically negative and positive other than the three wires on this uh, three-prong outlet right here, but it's all basically negative and positive. This cost me, for the components itself, this cost me, the, the components cost me about $100, $125. Uh, that, and then the inverter was, I believe, like $50. This battery is a pretty expensive battery. That's why I wanted to make this. This is like a $550, $600 battery. It's a smart battery which has got low temperature cutoff, all the, the BMS protections you would need. That's why I feel comfortable setting this out in my garage. It's good to minus 13 degrees, something like, like that, I believe, uh, which it rarely gets that cold out here, but in the event that happens, we get a cold snap, I'll bring it inside. But you can use all sorts of batteries. This is smaller than a, a Group 24 or a Group 31 battery. Most Life PO4 batteries, you'll see our group 31 batteries. That's the two that I have upstairs. But you don't have to go with 100 amp hours. You can go with something smaller. You could use a bigger toolbox. This one I got just because it, it was perfect size for all the components that I have in here because I have this smaller battery. But you could go the full size toolbox, which is the, the longer ones, and you could put a full size battery in here. It need to be a little bit higher because I believe those are like nine inches tall. But just kind of figure out the toolbox you need, what parts you're going to use, and what you can fit in here. And then it's just a little bit of, you know, thinking about things and where, where, this gonna, where is this going to go? Where is that going to go? Like this little thing right here just happened to work out perfectly. Otherwise, I had to figure out maybe throw it on the side or something like that. But this worked out perfectly. So just figure out the room that you have. And something like this, while it, it, it'll save you a little bit of money, the better the, the the thing that I like the most about something like this is I have control over the components inside of this. And as, as along with that, in preparedness, just learning how to do this 
is super important because it's a skill that you've learned. You've, you're learning how this electricity and everything works and how to set something like this up. So you're not going to be one of those guys that, hey, I found a solar panel and a battery out of a car. I'm good to go. Not that easy. And once you do something like this, you figure that out fairly quickly. But uh, that's it for today. If you guys have any questions, I tried to answer, show you exactly how I did all this. But if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, make sure and leave them below. Uh, send me an email to dale at thebugoutlocation.net if you want. But uh, with that, I'm done here today. Take care and prepare, everyone. We will talk to you all later.